I should be writing number 490 for April 2nd, 2020. Hi there, welcome to I Should Be Writing, the podcast for wannabe fiction writers. I'm your host, Mer Lafferty, and hope everybody's doing well. I was taking a walk with my husband the other night, and he mentioned how he listens to podcasts to escape, and pretty much everybody's just talking about the state of the world right now. And I thought, you know, I need to do that for my listeners, so I may update with personal stuff, but, <laughs> or point out the fact that I am emotionally and mentally devoid of focus right now and find it difficult to write, but I plan on focusing mostly on the writing and not the current events. I don't have a current event podcast, I have a writing podcast. Of course, this stuff does affect all of our lives, so it's going to be touched on, but not solely. Because now I want to talk about uh, the Artist's Way journey. And I did week two of Finding Water this week. I was not constant with my morning pages. I didn't do Sunday or Monday. And then I was back at it Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. So at least I've got that. What's interesting is the <laughs> the artist way kind of uh, reminds me of horoscopes in that, you know, if you look hard enough, you can see your your current situation in any horoscope. But one of the things they talk about Oh, she talks about in this chapter. This is chapter two of Finding Water, Uncovering a Sense of Reality. She talks about receiving a phone call from a young writer. And every day she calls Julia Cameron. And I wonder if I had Julia Cameron's phone number, if I'd call her every day too. Probably. But she says, each day she's called with some new misadventure. Her friends are misbehaving. Life seems to be misbehaving. Things have not been going her way. She blames the stress in her life for her not settling down to work. I know how she feels, but I'm also growing suspicious. Artists love drama, and when we, when we do not create it on the page or on the stage, we often create it in our lives. It is my suspicion that the young writer's life will stay stressful and dramatic until she decides to go back to work. When she's working, the drama will settle down. Now, currently, the drama in our lives is real drama. Yesterday on Twitter, I saw somebody... Somebody had posted a little infographic about how if you don't come out of the coronavirus with, uh, with a new language or have written or created something or learned something new, then you're, you're lying when you say, I wish I had time to learn that thing because you've had the opportunity. Only it was a lot more pithy and in a pretty font. And one woman, one woman was like, look, I am working from home, so I'm working and I'm homeschooling, and I'm cooking more often, and I'm exhausted, so screw you. <laughs> and so that is a very real, very real thing. However, when I was just talking to my husband today, and I was saying I've got that survivor's guilt, that things are okay for us. We're doing fine, and nobody's sick, and I'm feeling that whole survivor's guilt thing. But I realized I'm also not working very hard on the work that I have to do. I'm allowing things to distract me. I'm finding uh, escapism to be very, very, very attractive. And that's okay. But if I'm actively thinking I want to be doing something, what I do to help people is I podcast and I write stories that are escapism. It is not nearly as important as being a doctor or a nurse or someone who cleans hospitals, good lord, or somebody who's just still having to go to work at the grocery store or work the drive through at Starbucks. But it is something I can do. And so I tried to give myself a little pep talk and get back on this. I'm not trying to discount everything that's going on, but here's the deal. This is going to be happening for a couple more weeks, at least in the U.S. I know I have some international listeners and maybe 
your area is uh, one of the areas that's actually recovering. I hope so. I can't wait till we're all in areas that are recovered. But for now, for us in the U.S., we're just getting started. And I think we need to approach this like, like a rejection. If you're a relatively new listener, um, the way I approach rejection is I allow myself morning time. I don't just pick myself up, dust myself off and off and start all over again. I sit there and I get myself some chocolate or some wine and I think life is very sad right now. And my career is going nowhere. And I'm depressed. And I allow myself about 24 hours of that. That's not like 24 straight hours of drinking. I'm just saying that like mindset. And then I get back to work. And I'll tell you, the times that I have done this, the times when I've received either a rejection or a professional disappointment, and I tried to get back to work almost immediately, it was extraordinarily hard. Because I, you know, I was used to allowing myself morning time. And so I think as we get used to being at home or the stress of working outside the home. Actually, no, I'm not going to speak to that because I have not lived it. And I'm not going to tell you how to manage your own stress. You take care of yourself as you see fit. And I'm not telling anybody they should feel obligated to work. But if you really want to work, you really want to write, you really want to create, and you're finding it difficult, remind yourself that things have changed. And you need to get used to it. You need to mourn what you don't have anymore and allow that. And then, if you still want to get to work, try it out. See what happens. It's so hard because I do know that there are a lot of people in different situations. And if all you can do is hold your head above water, then don't let me or anybody else pressure you into following that dream because now's not the time. If you're at home super stressed out about losing your job and you have to try to get unemployment and all that, then don't listen to anybody telling you, well, take advantage of this time because your emotions and your mental health are all over the place. But I think we need to allow ourselves to be that way and see if allowing yourself to process all the crap that's going on will make that process faster. And once you get over the initial shock of whatever's going on in your specific situation, see if you can find some stability. And if finding stability is just being able to make it through the day without crying or make it through the day without fighting with somebody in your house, then that's great. And if stability is trying out something new or cooking something new, that's great too. And if it's trying something creative, picking up your instrument, working on that book you wanted to write, that's great too. But I think right now we need to allow yourself the emotions you're feeling and don't let anybody tell you you can't feel them or you shouldn't feel them. And when you process that, if you allow yourself to process that, you should recover a lot faster. My dog thinks she can take on a giant bird. I think it might be a vulture. I don't think my dog can take on a vulture. Anyway, so that's my message. I tried, said it wasn't going to be about the virus, and it still kind of is, but I'm still talking about living your creative life as a writer, and that is relevant right now. It is so relevant. I'm trying to process stuff myself, and I'm trying to work harder on what I can deliver to you because that is what I'm trying to do to help the world. I'm not nearly as important as anybody who's actually putting anything on the line in order to help you survive or get groceries. But I at least can offer some escapism, and I'm going to try to do that a little bit more often now. For Patreon listeners, I'm going to try to figure out how to stream for Patreon. I think it's possible. I've just never really looked into it. I'm going to be looking into it tonight. Um, that's so we can have more of an interactive type podcast if you want to support the Patreon, it's only a dollar a month, and it's patreon.com slash mightymer. You get access to the archives, you get access to the Discord, you get all sorts of stuff. 
and thank you for supporting. And if you can't support anymore or you have to step back your support because of your personal situation, of course, do it. I understand. That is the way of things right now. You can tell people about my show. You can get my books from the library. There's all sorts of ways that you can show appreciation without money. But my public service announcement today will be if you do know of a debut author who's got something coming out right now, you know their book's not doing well. And they could use some support. So if you have some spare cash and you're looking for a book, why don't you look for something by a debut author that came out in the past two months? So supporting the Patreon is patreon.com slash mightymurr. Emailing me is mightymurr at gmail.com. I'm more active on Twitter, I think, because seeking personal connection with people. That's at Mighty Murr. And my website is murverse.com. And I'm just going to end this with you should be washing your hands and you should be taking care of yourself. And if you feel like it, you should be writing. But I'm not going to pressure you. Remember, you can support the show at patreon.com slash Mighty Murr. I should be writing theme music provided by John Emilio. You can find more about him at johnemilio.com. This podcast is distributed under a Creative Commons Attribution Share Alike license.